all buried by sand and everything now because it's been 5,000 years. So anyway, there's a lot of proof. A lot of proof. Um, we just had to get past the knowledge filter of the colonial British government in India that was covering up all these things and, you know, preaching this crazy Aryan invasion theory and all of that. That's been completely debunked now. So, uh, and there's even more anomalous um, archaeological evidence that shows that human civilization is much, much older than previously thought. But because of the knowledge filter, which means that you can't get funding, you can't get a grant, you can't get published, unless you publish something that fits with the prevailed theories, prevailing theories in science, these observations have been basically covered up and, you know, thrown in the basement of the, of the museums and nobody ever sees them. Uh, my colleagues, Richard Thompson, uh, Sadaputa, and uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Come on, help me out here. What's Sadaputa's, what's Madhavananda's uh, Karmi name that they would be able to find on the internet? Guys? Anybody? Michael Cremo, thank you. Michael Cremo and uh, Richard Thompson wrote a book called Forbidden Archaeology. And basically what they did was a survey of all the archaeological finds in America and Europe over the last 350 years. So what they did, they basically, they analyzed each find according to the quality of the evidence. And they took both the accepted finds and the anomalous finds. So what they found basically at the end of their analysis was that the anomalous finds the quality of the evidence, the quality of the observations was just as good as the ones that were accepted. And the difference was that the anomalous finds did not support the theory of the recent origin of uh, Homo erectus in Africa and all of that. That is the scientific gospel. Uh, instead, they supported the Vedic theory that human beings arrived on this planet approximately 500 million years ago from the sun planet. Uh, and that we've been basically in a, st a civilized state of existence ever since then. Although that civilization has been destroyed many times, it was always rebuilt again because the same ancient knowledge is at its core, is at its origin. And that's the Vedic tradition, the esoteric teaching. So this esoteric teaching is actually at the core of all religions, of all ancient uh, spiritual teachings, of all yoga practices, of all, you know, magic, occultism, whatever, you, you find the same theories are there. Uh, it's just that they're incomplete or fragmented. And in the, in the Vedic esoteric teaching, they're whole, they're complete. Uh, and there's also a living tradition going on, a living line, lineage of masters going back for all that time. So our, our, uh, our histories go back a long, long time. I don't want to, you know, stretch your credibility by telling you how long, <laughs> but a long time, as long as it's possible. So, okay, in our material consciousness, we experience the material world as having three dimensions and then we're pushed along by time. But in the spiritual world, we experience eternal existence with full knowledge and ananda, what does ananda mean? Ananda means bliss. So bliss comes when we have the kind of experience or the kind of existence that we actually desire. Everybody has within the core of their heart an ideal kind of relationship or an ideal kind of activity that makes them happy, that's perfectly fulfilling. Uh, an ideal kind of love. Okay. So we can experience that love, we can experience that kind of relationship or those kind of activities in the spiritual world because in the spiritual world we have control over the dimension of possibilities. Not like here in the material world where our possibilities are limited by so many different factors. In the spiritual world there's no limit to the possibilities because God is there. God is there and we're with God. So just like when, uh, when a spark falls out of the fire, you know, like, like when a, a piece of wood pops and all the sparks come out, you know, 
if the spark gets thrown out of the fire onto water or onto the sand or the dirt, gradually the spark will uh, go out. You see? But that's what happens. When we get thrown out of the spiritual world into the material world, then our original consciousness gets covered over. It's like the spark going out. It loses its original quality. Uh, its effulgence and its, its brightness. And it becomes covered over by the material energy. And we become dull. We become inhibited. We become you know, conditioned by materials consciousness. But when, if the spark falls back into the fire, it doesn't go out. It stays bright. Uh, it remains in the equivalent quality of the source. So when we're in the spiritual world, because we're still in the fire, we're, still, we're not separated from God, we're with God in the spiritual world, we don't lose our brightness, we don't lose our spiritual qualities, and so we have full bliss, full knowledge, and eternal existence without any conditions, unconditional, unconditional existence, unconditional knowledge, and unconditional love. So it's not that when we come to the material world, we become material things. We are still spiritual. We are still in our original nature. We just get temporarily covered over by this material stuff. And the process by which we regain our original spiritual consciousness is this process of transcendental sound, by hearing transcendental sound. This is, what, this is transcendental sound, what I'm speaking right now, is transcendental sound vibration. It cleans the mind of all the material stuff. This is called cheto dharthana marjana. It means that cheta means the mind. Huh? Chit, remember, is knowledge. So cheta is that which contains knowledge. Cheta dharpana means like, like a mirror. Marjana means cleaning. So cheto dharpana marjana. Pavamahada vagni nirvapana. That this restores us to our original state of being, bhava. Uh, the original state of being is like full of knowledge, full of bliss, uh, full of, of transcendental positive emotion, full of love. Right? So the secret to love is to being in, is being in our original spiritual consciousness. And when we're in that consciousness, then all possibilities are open to us, all knowledge is there, everything is clear, we have so much energy, we have so much light, so much consciousness that we can really love, and we can really experience love, too. In this material world, we're always worried about, well, what if this happens, what if that happens, and, you know, what if I do this, if I make a mistake, and then I get cheated, and da da da, da. you know, you know that dance. So, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to move, transfer our consciousness from the material world to the spiritual world, and how do we do that? Well, let me use an analogy. When we see the light coming through the shutters here. Huh? We know the sun is there. Can we see the sun? Not directly. But because the symptom of light is there, then we say, oh, the sun must be there. And the sun is the origin or the reservoir of the light. Huh? Or similarly, uh, when we see rain, it's just a little sprinkle of water. But we know because the water is there, that somewhere the ocean is there. Uh, and the, the sun draws up the water from the ocean and makes it a cloud and then it dumps the rain someplace else. But without the ocean there would be no rain. So when we see rain, we know the, there's an ocean somewhere. Similarly, when we see the soul, we know that God is there. Because God is the origin. God is the reservoir of that energy. Whenever we see energy, there's always an energetic source. Uh, energy is emitted by something. It doesn't just exist all by itself. It comes from somewhere, some source. So when we see the, the energy of the soul, the energy of consciousness, the energy of the living being, life energy, we know there has to be a reservoir. There has to be a source. There has to be an origin of that energy. What is that? That's God. That's God. Uh, in one sense, God is the complete whole. Everything that exists. There's a nice mantra. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamudachite. Purnasya 
इदम आदाया पुनर पुनर एव विशिष्टे so it means that god is the complete whole om purna adaha purnami da and everything that exists is within that complete whole now every system of knowledge in the world has this idea of the complete whole isn't it even material science and everything has this idea of the universe or everything that is uh, that's the most basic idea of god that's the most universal idea of god everything that is and can be all of time all of space all living beings all energy all possibilities all of that put together that's god that's the complete whole okay well, what is the potency of god god has complete potency complete full